Hello students. Hi. Today we are going to talk about Indian puppet theater. There are numerous forms of storytelling and puppet theater tradition in India as well as elsewhere in Asia. Many of them are in serious danger of extinction in this age of movies, TV and digital technology. Most of them live mainly in village context. Large theatrical performances later developed, at least partially, for the storytelling traditions which served at the starting point and which was based on the same oral material. The process can roughly be outlined as follows. Number one, the starting point is the act of storytelling. Number two, the storytellers gradually started to employ different kinds of visual devices to illustrate their narration. They were scroll paintings, panels, puppets, shadow figures and even dolls. Number three, gesticulations, body movement, mime, dance, music, etc. was enriched by storytelling. During this process, the act of storytelling became more theatrical in character. India has several examples of theatrical traditions illustrating the different steps of development described above. In Rajasthan, for example, there exists the Phad tradition in which the narrator, while telling his story, opens up a huge Phad or a picture scroll on which the important scenes of the narrative are painted. Similar picture scrolls traditions can also be found in Gujarat, Bengal and Bihar. The next step in development of the storytelling was a shadow theatre in which the figures of ancient picture panels and scrolls are made cut out into flat shadow puppets. The themes of shadow theatre in India mostly have Puranas, Mahabharat and Ramayan. The shadow theatre genre can be found in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and Kerala. The size of the puppets vary from some 10 centimeters to 1 meter. Usually at least one hand of the puppeteer can be moved by the rod. Stylistically, the puppets are linked to the traditional visual art of their respective regions. The forms of three-dimensional puppet theatre in India include rod puppet operated from below with a rod, marionettes operated from above with strings and glove puppet operated with a hand inside the puppet. The puppet theatre usually uh, imitates in its repertoire style, dramaturgy and movement the live theatre form of the respective areas. Kerala's Bhava Kathakali or Bhava Kathakali Glow Puppet Theatre imitates Kathakali. Other forms of glow puppetry can be found in Orissa, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and West Bengal. One of the most famous of Indian puppet theatre genre is Kathputli Marionette Theatre of Rajasthan. In olden times, when court and aristocrat acted as protectors of art, local large epic stories could be staged as Kathputli plays. Nowadays, Kathputli performances consisting of short, entertaining stock numbers are more popular. They include, for example, a dance scene imitating Kathak dance, the tricks of local Bengali fakir, a snake charmer and a juggler's dance. Stylistically, the Kathputli marinade reflects the style of Rajput paintings of Rajasthan. The puppets' faces are carried of wood and painted while their bodies are stuffed with cotton. Their dresses meticulously follow the conventions of older times. We have varieties of puppet theatre in India, mainly shadow puppet, string puppet, glove puppet and leather puppets. Traditionally, puppetry plays in India enacted stories from Ramayana, Mahabharata and the Puranas besides local myths and tales. Puppet performances have been part of celebrations of various occasions, festivals and rituals. 
A sense of rhythm and dance is inherent in the Indian puppetry across region. Puppeteers with ankle bells dancing backstage to the accompaniment of percussion and other musical instrument while manipulating their dancing puppets in the front is a feature common to several styles of puppetry. Based on local lore, the characters the puppets portray determine their design, size, costume and colors. Their own special language of whistling voices is very much a mark of puppetry presentation and the language they speak or have modulated delivery. The shadow puppetry in India. Even though we are more familiar with the shadow puppets of Thailand and other Southeast Asian countries, it also exists in India, in Kerala, in Orissa and some other regions. The flat figures usually made of leather are lightly prepared on some transparent screen with a strong source of light behind. The shadows in black and white or in color of puppet is displayed and not the puppet itself. The screen thus forms the barrier between the audience and the puppet creating projections of the image. The impact on audience enveloped by darkness all around is quite dramatic. On the inner side of the screen, the puppeteer is isolated. This is seen very clearly in case of Kerala shadow puppets. The stage is a permanent building here and not a temporary shade as in other places. The men in the play theatre are invisible and effectively cut off from any contact on the other side of the screen. The earliest mention of shadow plays in literature art are found in India. The Pallava kings and the Kakatiya kings introduced their leather puppetry to Indonesia when they conquered Java. Also, missionary Buddhist priests took the shadows from India to both Indonesia and China during the great period of Buddhist expansion from 6th through the 9th century. Hence, one can conclude that the shadow theatre existed in India before that. The earliest extant shadow play script seemed to be the Dutta Ganga of Shubhatta, which was produced at Dhuli festival in 1243 that is 1912-58-59. Katputli or the string puppet. Katputli is a Rajasthani form of string puppetry which is a hereditary profession for the nomadic Bhat community from western Rajasthan. Most of the puppets made of painted wooden head and cloth stuffed bodies wrapped in skirts are articulated with only three strings attached to the puppeteer's fingers. They are manipulated with great dexterity and imagination. A few like the court dancers required performing very complicated movement have five to seven string. Trick puppet that is a juggler throwing up balls, a horse rider, the bhand or a clown from Jaipur, a snake charmer with snake, all these are more and they form a fantastic audience and they also fascinate the audience. A mask maker with two faces, one of the man and the other of the woman is very popular because of the faces are chained skillfully in an instance. The faces are carved at opposite ends or neck to neck. If the former, the marionette is so draped that one face rib remains hidden under its skirt. When the puppeteer deftly inverts the figure, the shirt exposes the face and covers the other. If the latter, the manipulator gives it a swift turn so that in the twinkling of the eye, the male puppet becomes the female one. As it survives now, Katputli theatre is not particularly dramatic since its text prospers has shrunk to a minimum. But it never fails to entertain with characters like a kettle drummer who refuses to die and rises from the lifeless each each time he is stuck down. The main play in the repertoire comprises 
ballads about brave deeds of Amar Singh Rathor. He was a legendary 17th century Rajput prince of Nagore in Rajasthan, allowing for long battle scenes. The other item comprises of acrobatic songs and dance number. The improvised stage has a backcloth behind which the puppeteer stands. Besides him, a typical troupe consists of singers and percussionists. Kathaput Kathputli music draws heavily from the rich and varied folk forms of the region as well as popular film tunes. While delivering dialogues, the puppeteer uses the boli. Boli is a kind of a whistle made by stretching a thin rubber tape between two bamboo strips tied firmly at both ends. When blown, it acts like a reed producing a shrill note. Lines spoken through it acquire a weirdly interesting tone. At time, it is used to create a trilling sound that helps in establishing the otherworldly atmosphere. Tola Pava Kuthu Puppetry holds an important and a prominent place in various performing art forms in Kerala. Tola Pava Kuthu, the shadow puppet play, and Pava Khatakali, the glove puppet plays, it is also known as Pava Kuthu or Nihal Kuthu. It is prevalent in Palagad and Ponnani Taluk of Kerala. This is traditionally a dance by the Pulavanars. The Pavakal or puppet are used for the performance. Tol Pava Kuthu, Tol means leather, Pava means puppet, Kuth means play, is a shadow theatre tradition on a grand scale performed for goddesses Devi in the in the temples of central Kerala. Tola Pava Kuthu or Pava Kuthu or Kuthu originated in the Palaghat district of Kerala. As a part of the ritualistic worship of the goddess, it is performed in the temples of Bhagavati or Bhadrakali. The Tol means leather, Pava is a puppet and Kuthu is a play. Thus Tola Pava Kuthu means performance or play with puppets made of leather. The Ramayana stories is the theme of Tola Pava Kutu. A majority of these stories are from Kamba Ramayana. In order to illustrate and interpret the meaning of the verses, Tola Pava Kutu performers have often added stories, episodes, explanations and dialogues to the original text. The actual performance allows improvisation. The explanation of verses and dialogues are in a mix of Tamil and Malayalam. The performance is intended to appropriate the goddess. It is regarded as a form of worship. The puppets are arranged behind a long curtain. These type of dancers are popular in all sections of the society. Special playhouses called Kuth Mantapam are built in the temple premises. The play is performed by projecting the shadow of the leather puppet on a white screen. The performers usually belong to the Vela Chatti and the Nair caste. The chief puppeteers are called Pulavars. The ancient palm leaf manuscripts of the scripts are treasured by Tolapava Kuthu family. At the moment, there are only some 30 Tola Pava Kuthu artists left in Kerala. Puppet making. The outline of the puppet is drawn on a deer skin after it is cleaned and dried, followed by a process of careful chiseling. The natural thickness of the deer skin is retained with care as it is the black shadows of the puppet that should fall on the screen. The skin is carefully cut to ensure that the shape facial expression and embellishment on the puppets are accurately duplicated on their shadows. Tiny holes are punched in the leather to highlight the shadow. About a dozen chisels of different shapes and sizes are used for the sake of this delicate job. The puppeteers use goat, cow or even buffalo skin for making puppets because the deer skin is not available now. 
Tula Power Kutu is a night long performance. This is the part of the temple festival season which starts from December and lasts till May. After the Ganesh Puja, the puppeteers for the whole night sing Kamba Ramayan verses in Tamil, Malayalam and Sanskrit. Every day puppeteers narrate one story from Ramayan. The puppets are manipulated and special effects are created by introducing more source of light in the form of oil lamps behind the puppet. The performance is organized in every Bhadrakali temple in the district of Palaghat and Trishur. Tola Pava Kutu forms an integral part of the annual festival dedicated to Goddess Devi. Long complicated ritual precede the actual play. The sacred flame is carried from the temple sanctum in order to light an oil lamp on the stage. The screen cloth is hung on the stage and 21 oil lamps are lit from the sacred flames. Drumming announces the performance is about to begin. Finally, the actual play starts. In older time, the entire story of Ramayan from Rama's birth to his coronation was shown during 41 nights. Now, selected scenes from a series of performances lasting some 20 days. Putul Nach is an art of Bengal. The literary meaning of Putul Nach is Lol's dance. This is extended from West Bengal through Tripura and Assam. The oldest form can be said as a putul or rod puppet. This 1.5 meter tall figures made of bamboo or hollow wood are joined for easy manipulation with string attached to various parts of their bodies. The nachaya or the manipulator has a wooden cup attached to the waistband in which the rod supporting large puppet rest. The troupe includes a singer who usually plays the harmonium and musician on the clarinet, sanai or double deck wind instrument, dhol and a kansi that is bell metal plate beaten with stick. This is often performed at rural fairs. The form uses an improvised proscenium and starts with the adoration of Krishna. At the Sati Mela in Kalyani, Nadia district, 15-20 cm rod puppet known as Yamer Puri Putul, dolls of the place of Yama, god of death, appear on the darkened stage viewed through bamboo slits. The Beni Putur or the globe puppet are found at village festivals in Midnapur district. They have terracotta heads and wooden hands. They used to be played by palaquin bearers to while away their time between trips to earn some extra money. The stories accompanying their dances were normally about Lord Krishna. The puppeteer still perform without any stage in full view wearing their dolls on both hands. Putul Nach using marionettes made of pith measuring 1 meter and attached to 4 wires has gone professional in Bagula Nadia district. This was brought from Bangladesh by a refugee who saw the puppet at home in the possession of the gypsies of Rajasthan. The group has a repertoire of 15 or 16 plays based on Mahabharat and Ramayana or even modern social scripts. It tours Bengali speaking areas in autumn. The master puppeteer single-handedly sings all the songs and delivers the various dialogue accompanied by musicians. A variety of table puppet theatre is common among the tribal Adivasis of Western Bengal. These employ small dark marionettes of seasoned wood and bamboo, manipulated by a combination of rods and string to some accompanied by flute and drums. Malda district is the home of highly unusual form known as Manaputul or human dolls, in which actors imitate marionettes. It has hardly any narrative to speak of mainly relying on the sheer harmonious novelty of the concept. The performers sing, indulge in crosstalk and mimic puppet behavior, jumping and moving with limp limb 
jerky motion as if pulled by strings. The Oriya Puppet Theatre. Puppet is very known and popular in Orissa. This is the only state in India where all forms of this kind of performing art, namely rod puppet, glove puppet, shadow puppet and string puppet still exist. In Orissa, they are known as Gopalila Kandai Nata, string puppet play, Saki Kandai Nata, glove puppet play, Ramlila Kandai Nata, rod puppet play and Raman Chaya, shadow puppet play. Gopalila Kandhai Nata, String Puppet Play. Gopalila Kandhai Nata of Orissa is a string puppet play marionette. It comes from the village Badukondada of Bhanjan Nagar in south of Orissa. Puppeteer family of the said region claim that their forefathers had learned the art from an unknown sadhu, mendicant of the Hindi speaking region almost six generations around 150 years ago. It was practiced by Hari Gaudas. The Puranic and the Kavya literature support this belief. The recent, that is the last 150 years dancers, commentators have praised this very enigmatic dance theatre performing arts. The master puppet maker artist belong to Antrapada village. Most of the groups comprise of farmers who do the puppet show during free time. It is not one particular caste or community, but the group of like-minded people who enjoy the art. It also generates some extra income and allows an artist and allows an artistic expression. Most of the episodes are from Puranic and epic stories. They are interesting with battles, marriage, love and betrayal. The snake charmer, jugglery, man, tiger fight and acrobats are much enjoyed by the people. The people are fascinated by marionettes. Nowadays, modern music, stories of sex and violence and some social and political issues are included. Ravan Chaya Shadow Puppet Play One of the oldest traditions of shadow puppets in Orissa is Ravan Chaya. Words like Chitrapata, canvas, Patta Chitra, applique, and Bimb, shadow, have been used in Ramayana, Mahabharat, and other kavyas. The rock painting of the 2nd and the 4th century in Koenjar shows the solid evidence of Ravan Chaya. Only Ramayana stories and that too of Sita, Ravana, and his battle with Rama are performed. As Ramayana, in the end, is the story of good over evil, the victory of truth over deceit, the name of the form Ravan Chaya has a great significance. The Ravan Chaya puppets are made of untanned hide of deer, sambar and goat. They are flat plates without joints. They are manipulated by the puppeteers with the help of a prop attached to the lower part of the puppet. Usually a band of musicians sit either in front or behind the stage with their musical instrument Khanjani, tamburin, dakshati, castnets, mridanga, a percussion drum and a small cymbal. While the puppeteer manipulates their puppet from behind, the shadows are projected on the screen rhythmically to the accompaniment of the music and song. Till about 1970, this art remained as a form of entertainment among the rural folk in villages like Sipur and Odasa. By the 80s, however, Odasa remained the only village that hosted this art form. Artists like uh, Bishnabadas of Sipur and a few lovers and patrons of art are responsible for the continuation of the art form. Some institutions are started to preserve the art form as well as develop and modernize it. It has introduced modern themes other than mythological. The artists have succeeded in claiming a prestigious place for Ravan Chaya in the world of shadow theatre. Students, I am sure you have enjoyed today's puppet theatre journey.